Nothing cold waters, no star to be seen. I'm Jeffrey with IGN, and I'm here with the stars of the new video game Stray Gods, the role playing musical, Laura Bailey and Anjali Bimani. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that's us. We're not awkward at all. We're trained and sensitive professionals. It's yeah. true. Okay, so let me start off with this um, for both of you. Let's say I'd, I'm, I'm a dummy. I don't know anything. What is a role-playing musical? That is an interesting question. This particular game, a role-playing musical, is a game where you get to um, embody the character of Grace and make choices as Grace. Um, but your decisions, you also make your like, branching dialogue choices that you make happen in song. Okay. So as you create the character and you define who Grace is, um, you create the music for the game as well. Which is crazy. And it's not just like you you choose something and you hear a different song. No, you choose something within the song and you will hear a different line of the song or the kind of song it become it'll change into a different sort of genre of song. There's so much there's so much to discover. Yeah. So many a crowd wrapped in a shroud, a corpse in a cave. Maybe you don't know. It's a visual novel game. Like, my mom could play this, right? Totally. Yeah. Just give it the controller it's and... Super approachable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there's a very low lift. Yeah, which is which is really nice because, like, I feel like sometimes, like, you know, my sister will, like, I want to play a game, but, like, can I play it on, like, cinematic mode? Like, easy. Like, I just want the story. Right. I don't want to, yeah. you know, fight That's a bunch of people. That's me always. Oh, really? I can't play 90% of the games I'm in. Really? I'm so bad at first-person shooters. I can't get past the training module of Apex Legends. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. I'm good at other things. You're good at I so swear many things. I'm good at other yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, in Overwatch, what level are you currently in Overwatch? Obviously, you're probably... Negative 271, <laughs> I think, was the last, the last I yeah. checked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll try to level yeah. up after this. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so, Laura, I have to ask you this. Um, the First of all, the game starts off with a beautiful duet between you and Ashley Johnson, who yeah. we all love so much. Um, and and I have to bring this up or my boss will kill me. <laughs> but you and Ashley Johnson are seen, singing in, in an auditorium theater. The last time you and Ashley Johnson were in a video <gasps> game, together in an auditorium. auditorium. It was yeah. very different. How have very I not different. made that connection? It's, it's very, very, very different. <sighs> yeah, things, it, I would say it's probably the opposite of what happens in Stray Gods. Bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Um, what, what's that, obviously, you know, Ashley, you know, we're all good friends. Like, what is that like to, to be able to be in such different spaces with like a fellow cast member? Well, I mean, Ashley is one of my best friends in the universe. So, you know, when I, I know she's got such an amazing voice and she's so phenomenally talented. So that as soon as we saw Calliope, I saw the character art and I knew what that role was. I was like, please let it be Ashley. Can it be Ashley? I want to sing this duet, but they're so bad. And I was like playing the scratch track for her at, when we were at Critical Role so that she could like hear it and be interested in it and want to do it too. So. Oh wait, that's amazing. Wait, so you got her, you were like, come join this? Cause you know, please, every, you're this. assembling the team yes. and like, that I, I've I've listened to Adrift just on repeat since I finished the game. It's it's been stuck in my head nonstop. Yeah. Nonstop since the first time I heard it. it it's just it's it's <laughs> like it's I get chills. So yeah. Delicious. yeah, it's yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that oh uh, I'm it's so good. It's really good. You guys are so good. In Stray Gods, you're able to choose three different traits. Uh, you can do charming, kick ass, and clever. Uh, which I memorize that. I don't even have anything written. <laughs> There's nothing. It is all a blank. It's, it's blank. It's blank. I, that is I, just to remind you that the world is your wide open palace. Yes, well, yes. I'm ask I'm any no, please. Questions. Yeah, yeah. Hold, yeah, yeah. Well, now I know what to expect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Laura knows everything. <laughs> I have just, it's like a like a black light. Like, all right. So, yeah. Kick ass, charming, and clever. Um, I, have to, I have to ask you sort of the, the, the classic questions here. Um, what what did you guys choose when, when you played it? What, what, what was drawn to you? What did you choose? What were you most excited to sing for? Because they're very different. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised at myself because I had every intention of going in and choosing Kick-Ass. Like I knew yeah. I was gonna choose Kick-Ass. And then when it got to the part in the game where you have to make that decision, my finger just like gravitated to Clever. Oh. And I don't know entirely why, but I was like, 
Okay, well, you can always go back and play it again. Let's find 100%. out what Clever Grace is. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna end up going back to play it again. Like, the also, not, I'm gonna say play it so many times because I do know so many of the things that I want to hear. And if I don't get a chance to hear them, I'm gonna be like, ah, drats, I have to go back. Yeah. And I'm gonna say drats because apparently I am from ye olde time. <laughs> um, um, curses. Curses, I <laughs> foiled again. Um, but yeah, so I ended up choosing Clever. Interesting. But you know, Laura's very clever, so that makes sense. She's also a kick-ass, though. Yeah. Well, I went with charming. Relatively charming. <laughs> you went to went charming. I go charming, yeah. but I mean, I. it's funny because we spent so long recording the music on this. It was so much recording um, that I can't remember what everything ended up sounding like. And a lot of times, you know, I was just recording my part of the songs and I wasn't hearing the other pieces or... I was only hearing like plunky piano behind me um, because Austin hadn't written all of the amazing stuff behind it yet. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's like hearing it for the first time. That's all. That's almost more impressive that you have to because you know I assume the recordings were remote and so you're able yeah. to you're just. That's incredible the way that it pieces it together. How do they do that? How do they? How does? How do you make a video game? How do, you, how do video games happen? I, I, well, I think you start with flour and and salt. Butter. 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 That's good. Butter. That's good. Yeah, butter. yeah. Like the Powerpuff Girls. Just yeah. put it all together. Start and with yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, I, I love that. Um, yeah. Also, I, I want to mention when you, in the game, when you when it's like the big moment when you choose Grace's trait, it's in the middle of your duet with Ashley. Yeah. So you're just like, I'm like, what's my, happening? My eyes are watery and it's just like the soft piano kind of on loop and it's like, okay, um, what is happening? Am I in love? I, <laughs> I'm. Okay, charming, which I did charming as well, because like, you know. <laughs> I think that might have been why I ended up not picking Kick-Ass, now that I think back to it, because it's such a beautiful moment that I was like, I came into the whole thing thinking like, okay, I'm gonna be Kick-Ass, but then, oh. It's so oh, soft, it's so and, soft beautiful. and sweet and I can't be Kick-Ass, let me just be clever. Yeah, um. which I also love in the game, you can kind of do kick-ass coded yes. items despite 100%. your trait, which is yes. n which is like what I want in a game like this because it's like, I want it all. <laughs> it's so cool and when we were recording it and Austin was like, okay, so this is if you've chosen Charming but you're choosing a kick-ass option and then this is if you've chosen the clever option after you've chosen the kick-ass option. So everything, and it has to make sense. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how they did I, it. I don't know either. Okay, first of all, <laughs> Let's back up for a second. You both sing. You're singers. You're, you're, you're singing. Is this the first time you've sung in a video game? Oh. No, because Saints Row. That's right. We all, of what course. I, I should have. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a clip of yeah. I think it is the first time that I've sung in a video game. They hunted me for power to fuel the psychopathic car. And once they fell before me and worshipped all I was. But when you're recording something like this remote, is it like more or less like nerve wracking? Like, is there is there a different kind of pressure? I mean, video games in general, more often than not, unless you're doing mocap, you you're not recording necessarily with the same person unless you're doing cutscenes. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's anything that's triggered in a game, usually you're in a, a recorded session by yourself with the, the session director and hopefully the writers and other developers on Zoom or Skype or whatever magic thing that you're using that uses the, the interwebs mm -hmm. um, and the Wi-Fis. I don't know, I'm not technical. <laughs> um, I I'm, a, I, I, I'm Indian, you get one gene, the medical or the techno <laughs> the tech gene, you don't get both. I got the medical gene, so I can't do, I'm not tech, um, but... You said everything correct, by the way. Okay, yeah. sure, the yeah, yeah. wee is, I believe, how yep. they call it. Wee-fee. Wee-fee, yes, it's yes, the accent mark. Um, what was I saying? Uh, recording remotely. Recording Record, Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you're, so it was pretty normal, I think, at that point. Um, the only thing that made it feel different uh, was at the end of my first set of recording sessions, um, Austin, who was nearby geographically, wanted to run over and say hi and give me a hug, but we were all having to still be masked up, so we took a selfie from like six feet away, and that picture is my reminder of like that first, we did it, we did it while the pandy was going on, wow. we did it while we were all having to be locked up. It yeah. was very, very cool that they pulled it off that way. Yeah, my I, I recorded in studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were recording in studio alone. Um, 
I'm trying to think. I don't think I ever had to do a, a session from my house for this no, one, though, because not for this one. We it's were, so specific. Yeah. 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 Wow. It, it, it is really nice, too, because, like, I'm not equating your jobs to what I do at IGN, but like I make TikToks in my bedroom by myself and I've perfected like the Philips Hue lighting of where I stand. And yeah, it's like yeah. to go in there and just like have like your booth that you're in and you're very comfortable to be able to give your best kind of self is nice when you don't have to like go into like a big empty whatever. Voiceover is amazing because you can record with no pants on. Yeah. That's and that's why. I mean, I guess news anchors can do that too if they want. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's you're just at home, comfy, mm -hmm. no makeup. It's yeah, good. just go and you know make sure that AC's turned Although off. Although in so fairness, you I do do that at the studio too. Here's my yeah. show, no pants. You know. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, they say no, no shirt, no shoes, no service. They didn't say anything about pants. They didn't say anything about no recording. Ha ha! That's it's right. Service. Yeah. So they may not bring me tea, but but I the mic is on. on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to bring up uh, our beloved beloved friend Troy Baker. Um, that you know, we're all equally that we all equally are friends with. Um, um, <laughs> um, uh, I, I, Troy's amazing. Um, he is in the game. He's Apollo, yes, he but is. he was also the voice director. Yes, he was. How yeah. how does that work? What what is what is that? Well, I mean, since it's I, he's I, he's been my director on multiple projects now, but. Um, in the in the voice booth, you know, he was never like in the studio with us. So he's just like on Zoom and being he's so wonderful because he knows us all so intimately and he knows where our confidence lies and where maybe our nerves come from. And so like he was able to approach scenes and songs in a really wonderful way to make us feel as comfortable as possible, you know. Um, and he's, he's also so artistically insightful and incisive with his direction. Like everything that he sometimes one of the challenges for a director is really understanding how to speak to the actor in a language that they can actually play. Like they might know what they want, but they might not necessarily know how to get it. I think Troy, because he's so good on both sides, he he really knows how to ask, or not even ask, but how to just drop a little nugget in your lap of information that will get you to think about the thing that he somehow wants to see come out of you. It's very, very cool. Um, because this is the first time that we'd actually worked together. We'd hung out and played together yeah. and all that stuff, but this is the first time we worked together and it was like, Phrases like he would, he wouldn't, he didn't need to go into deep detail. He would just say like one thing, and I'd be like, "Cool, got it, let's go," because he just it was so specific and so exactly playable. And yeah, it's just really good. And it's great because if you're recording by yourself, he's the person that you're reading with in a scene, so yeah. everything is better because he's so talented. Yeah, man. Oh, and also just also the dream of just like always working on projects with friends too. Yeah. Like, yeah, you you feel it like it's I like our I, life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's great. It's yeah. Great. How are you? No, I, <laughs> you guys are great. I'm over here sweating. Uh, <laughs> no, that it is. It and it sh like as like a person like playing the game, not knowing anything. Like it, it shows. Like it feels it. I'm just like this is so fun. Like this is a game I probably would have never played. But I'm just like, oh, Laura Bailey. Like I, I got to. I have to play this. And it's like, wait, this is like really fun because I just like you know that like it's it's like a labor of love. I mean, it's a musical video game. They don't really make those. This is I've like, never. I, I think heard this of is that the first. Before. Yeah. This yeah. We can say it's the first one about Greek singing musical <laughs> genre. Well, that. no one correct me in the comments if that already exists, please. <laughs> um, um, uh, I, I also, um, I love that you both specifically are here together because like obviously Critical Role, like bowing down here. I, I want to know, does your relationship with, you know, tabletop gaming in terms of like making decisions and improvising at the table, does, how, how, how does that influence the way you bring your characters to life in Stray Gods? I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much I feel like more involved, more connected I am as an actor after doing tabletop yeah. because you have to embody a character for so long and think about, you know, all of their likes and dislikes and every little aspect of a character that maybe you wouldn't explore before. And now it's just so easy to dive in and like f jump into that in any role. Mm -hmm. and and really embody somebody. Yeah. I find in 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 TV and film especially you you rarely if ever honestly you just don't. You don't get a chance to inhabit or at least I haven't to inhabit a character the way you get to in TTRPGs. You just there's no option for doing that and that level of immersion in the world that this character is in and connecting with the people that this character or the 
non-human characters that you connect with. So learning how to really um, step into the the emotional landscape of a character that may change at the drop of a hat, which is what we do as human beings. We're laughing and then something horrible happens and then all of a sudden everything completely changes. That's what happens in this game, right? And so being able to do that uh, with more facility, I think definitely for me came from yeah. from to the top. I'm more emotionally available for a character. 100%. I love that. Wow, yeah. Because also, like, I mean, this is like, I mean, it's not really that advertised, but this is like a murder mystery. Like, this is, is like, yeah. you're just like, oh, wait, why? I need to be cleared of my name. Like, and so it's just like kind of navigating that with Grace in the game. It was so fun. It's great because I I was recording it and I didn't know who the killer was going to end up being until we were recording who the killer no was. No way. Man, that is, oh, that's so good. I'm, I just want to play it now again. <laughs> at my feet everything I've learned wasted on a girl who doesn't know how to be free 